Oh, most of you will know that United unfortunately lost 3-0 at home to our great rivals, Man City. And to be honest, not much of a surprise in terms of a result. I think the performance of the United was a bit concerning, um, especially when you consider we started the game pretty well. The first seven minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, however much you want to stretch it, definitely wasn't over 15. We troubled Man City. We had a few, let's say a few, we had a couple chances that were kind of half chances but on our day individual brilliance in previous matches would have probably gave us the result and I felt as if when I was watching the game in real time Man City also felt that they felt like they didn't start too well they started a bit slowly maybe they already took us for granted because they just assumed they'd win the game and they kind of had took their foot off the pedal and I think they were happy as soon as they realized we weren't going to score I think they then were able to assert control or dominance on the ball after the 15 minute mark and it was no coincidence that that then eventually led to the penalty incident where unfortunately um Hoyland pulled back Rodri in a box which then led to you know Haaland taking the penalty and selling fucking Onana the wrong way so I think all of that sort of dominance really if anything, zapped all the confidence and the belief out from our players. Because I don't think Man City played even that well, especially from previous performances um, where Man City have absolutely destroyed us. I thought they were in second gear, really. And they didn't need to go anywhere because I think they kind of had us in the palm of their hands. They were toying with us. They had always controlled the ball. And I think one thing you could always tell when I was watching the game, a very kind of clear example of how far apart we are from each other and the fact that Man City are clearly on another level when it comes to structure and it comes to their team and quality is the way that the players were receiving the balls in tight areas, the way that they were manipulating the ball, the way the ball was progressing up the pitch. Everything from Man City just looked crisp and intentional and purposeful. And again, everybody on that pitch looked like they had supreme technical ability when it comes to controlling and manipulating the ball. Whenever it came to United players, it seemed a bit clunky. It seemed a bit all over the place. It just didn't really seem to go anywhere anytime soon. So that was the only real concerning part of it. It was like, Jesus Christ, after all this money spent, after having one of the highest wage bills out here, having whatever else, you know, all these re revamps, redones of the team and whatever, we still don't have a team that you can see that looks like they're comfortable on the ball, that looks like they're comfortable in possession, that looks like they're comfortable in tight areas, that looks like they can pass the ball consistently to their teammates, you know, within five yards and stuff. It doesn't seem to happen too much. Um, I was kind of sorry and sad for Dallow. Um, with Bruno Fernandes playing as a makeshift right winger, which is always annoying. It meant that he was essentially playing as a fullback by himself without no cover. Um, and Grealish was absolutely tearing Dallow apart. He was receiving the ball, spinning, going at him, cutting in, cutting out. He was doing whatever he wanted to Dallow. And I think any moment where Bruno Fernandes did try to help Dallow out, all he was trying to do was just take the wind out of Grealish's sails by flipping, fouling him. So Bruno Fernandes was absolutely shocking that game, to be honest, as was Rashford, as was all our players to be completely honest but one of the things that really kind of disturbed me about the game in overall and something that really kind of left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth and made me think like what the hell was going on with our club what the hell was going on with our manager specifically in Eric Ten Hag we played pretty decently I felt in the first half right we we had a okay solid midfield block I think Amrabat playing as that deep lining um defensive midfielder in front of Maguire and Johnny Evans I thought provided us with a bit of solidity in that midfield where I didn't feel like Man City were finding it easy to get through us through the middle they were basically getting a lot more joy by spreading the balls out to the wide um, flanks and obviously having Grealish and um, Foden you know kind of stretch our defense out wide a bit and then kind of send the balls into the box but I thought for the most part we did stop Man City walking through us in the middle of the park but then at half time for some odd reason I have no no idea why that exactly happened but at half time for some odd reason he decided Ericsson Hag to take off Amrabat for some reason and then put McTominay playing in Amrabat's position which is a deep lining defensive midfielder now I'm not the biggest Tony McTominay fan I think he's fucking awful he probably is nowhere near United class and he should have been sold a very long time ago but it's clear to see that his best position is playing as an attacking midfielder 
maybe not even as a false nine or whatever or just a backup striker no an actual attacking midfielder like a conventional number eight that's able to run late into the box and score the goals that he scores i think he's obviously clearly really good at that when it comes to influencing the game in terms of touch you know passes and whatever else he's not going to be that guy but it comes to making late surging runs into the box and being just a nuisance in there having a good strike outside of the box and being able had to have decent heading he's definitely great in that position so if you're going to play McTominay the only play you place you can play him is further forward as a midfielder you should never be playing as a, as a DM I think he's kind of cursed um because of his size right he's like this six foot plus um Scottish guy right he's built like shit he's built like a fucking brick shit house so people just assume because he's really jacked and he's really tall and he's really athletic that he should be playing as a defensive midfielder but he's not he's an attacking midfielder so Ayrton Hawk swapping Amrabat for um McTominay in that position was bizarre and I felt like was the sign that then Man City took control of the game in the second half because if I'm not mistaken the second goal they scored from Haaland just after the second half was like basically four minutes into the second half around the 49th minute so clearly that little weird tactical change that Eric Ten Hag did never worked and we looked all over the place from then on it was basically, you know, a miracle that it only ended 3-0 because Man City were in total, total, total control. So that for me was really um, a big warning sign because we all know the players are terrible. None of us are sitting here saying that Eric Ten Hag should be expected to be making miracles with these players. But already they're like, their performance levels aren't the greatest. So if you give them an excuse to throw the towel in, they will. And I feel like Eric Ten Hag gave these players an excuse because he took off Amrabat, who was playing okay at that time. Even if he wasn't playing the greatest, he was still providing a defensive cover and also plugging in holes, um, you know, in front of Maguire and Evans and the entire back line. So it prevented Man City to easily walk through us in the middle, which would let them to only, you know, attack us from the wings. But the moment that changed, they were attacking us from all over the place. They were knocking balls over the top, through the middle, out on the flanks. It was an absolute bloodbath. And honestly, it was a miracle, absolute miracle. It only finished flipping 3-0. I swear to God, it was an absolute miracle. It only finished 3-0. But then to make matters worse, to make matters worse, just the other day, United, of course, decided to lose again at home. <laughs> and this time in the flipping Carabao Cup, the League Cup against Newcastle. Newcastle basically got revenge um, from us beating them last season on the way to winning the flipping trophy itself. And to be honest, this was even more frustrating and even more demoralizing. Because if anything, a lot of us, myself included, were like, oh, why does the manager rotate this team enough? Why doesn't he have the players on the bench who need to have opportunities to play playing? Why is he always playing Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford and never get dropped? Why, 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 why? Well, Exeter and Hag decided, okay, cool. You guys want these guys to play. Here you go. He put out a lineup of guys that you would largely consider are the second team, um, especially in midfield. And it didn't work. It really didn't work the entire game. And if anything, it probably felt like it was less of an individual personnel thing and just more so an inability to like be organized, um, to play for each other, to plug gaps, um, to give a shit really. That's essentially what happened because I felt like as soon as Newcastle scored their first goal, our heads completely dropped. And don't get me wrong, the first goal was very well taken. Um, I think it was a ball over the top that essentially Almiron ran onto and was able to strip whoever he was running, um, trying to defend against him and got one touch, you know, over flipping on Nana's hands. And Nana still was looking a bit shaky to me. And I thought, to be honest, all their goals were really well taken. My favourite probably would be Joe Willicks from them, especially, you know, I, I love a good side foot finish outside the box and that was a really well done from him. But, I feel like Man Newcastle, again, similar to Man City, didn't have to do much to win. I think we kind of made it a lot easier for them because as soon as they scored their first goal, the players kind of rolled over and died. And for me, that is kind of unacceptable, especially when you think about where we are this season, what it's looking like we're going to end. You would imagine a League Cup, although I'm not bothered about it, would be one of those competitions that Ayrton Hag would want to use to galvanise the team. Whenever you're going through a bad run of form, 
bad patchy run in the league or whatever it may be you'd want these top positions to come around so he can give you a little bit of respite but the way that these guys are performing was absolutely crazy even though i said i think before the game started i said something to myself like oh newcastle probably need this league cup more than we do now this season especially considering the money that they've invested into their squad and where they want to go and stuff just having that trophy you know after such a long time would obviously be something that they would obviously um be all over the moon about but the concerning thing again for us as a United fan is just we don't really see or myself I don't really see what this team does in training there's still no identity there's still no way of playing the patterns of play are all over the place like the individuals are still very questionable you look at someone like an Anthony and it's like 80 whatever million what that was paid for him in world you know a record signing or world record but a record signing for United and the fact that he still looks so painfully average and don't really see the use for him as well in the team and the fact that he keeps continually getting picked and then of course the Maguire Lindelof partnership at the back was really bizarre um Regulon playing at left back didn't really offer much and neither did Dallow um Casemiro looked very shaky and had to go off I think with an injury at half time Mason Mount is looking like one of the most pointless signings of all time uh, I don't know why he wouldn't be bothered to signing him we probably should have kept hold of Fred if you're gonna sign the Mason Mount because Fred I still think nowadays is miles clear of Mason Mount as a player and then of course the most concerning part of it was Medjbury Hassan Medjbury because I don't know again do we see much in him as a player apart from kicking people and stuff has he got much technical ability outside of just being able to run and clock up loads of kilometers and stuff it doesn't look like it. he doesn't look like a really good technically proficient player either so there's a real mismatch of players here that I don't really see what it makes sense or how it's going to work for the long term or what you want to get with these players but one thing that is for sure is that this result and maybe the next result that we're going to have coming up for fixture for United in the league, I feel like are going to be very testing moments for Eitan Hal because so far, if you are, you know read some of the papers and some of the rumours online, there is a suggestion out there that his job could be under threat and most likely he could get sacked sooner rather than later. And for me, I personally have no qualms if he does get sacked or if he stays to be honest because I still think the biggest problem at the club isn't the managers isn't the players even it's definitely the board and the owners until we get rid of the Glazers we are doomed I think we've basically seen evidence of that over the years since Sir Ferguson's left I don't think we've had a major you know we don't have we've never had a, a sustained um, period of success we've never had a consistent run you know out of playing good football or just being a team that was winning things it's never happened um, post Sir Ferguson so clearly the proof's in the pudding so if that's the case I think all of us should be able to deduce that even if you even if you don't agree with that um, you know I don't think ever, all of our previous managers were that terrible. I just think it's a combination of them maybe not being the right choice and also having owners who clearly don't care about the footballing side of things as much as probably the fans and other people would do who come into the job new. So again, the only way we can kind of see success is I feel like maybe we stumble across, you know, the next Sergs uh, Ferguson or something or the next club or the next Guardiola, which obviously is likely. And there also isn't a guarantee that that person would want to come to United, right? Maybe you want to go to another club, a smaller one, a more regional one, wherever it may be. So all these things are hypotheticals, but I just wish that there was a solution now that would appease everybody and that would I would say guarantee but that would at least get us some way along the journey in terms of maybe getting us back to where we should be right I don't think there is though because the risk involved in signing a new manager and then thinking that's going to do everything is really high the risk of keeping Ericsson Hag in the job even though he's absolutely stinking the place out and he's clearly um, in over his head is very high um, especially when you consider all the turmoil and the stress confusion and the drama that's going on behind the scene in the dressing room it's looking really nuts because there's been reports coming out recently about certain you know individuals in the dressing room not bringing you to happy with how strict Ericsson hog is and all this malarkey and to be honest it's not real surprise i don't think anybody with any common sense would have not seen this because i think you can do that whole strict thing as a manager but it only really works that whole disciplinarian that whole being cold or leaving players out thing only works when you're winning if you're not winning games and suddenly the players that you're leaving out in a lurch, especially if they're like locker room favourites, right? They're like very popular within a group of players. It can be very detrimental to the overall mood of the team. So I think Eric Ten Hag, for me, 
I feel like he underrated or didn't really maybe keep that in consideration when he maybe banished Sancho and a few other players and even the Maguire thing if you think about it as much as I don't like Maguire but that Maguire situation was very odd he essentially came in stripped Maguire of his captaincy made him the sixth fifth or whatever set choice center back then went to sell him in the summer but there was no bids then he comes back into the team and you know you're just meant to pretend everything's okay I'm sure Maguire has his own f fans and friends in the dressing room who probably weren't too keen with that either. They're like, okay, we understand football-wise, you want to strip him of the captaincy, but this treatment is a bit odd, the catalogue of things that's going on, especially when you read the rumours or the stories that were happening about Jay and Sancho essentially being banished, banished away from the team and the treatment that he's receiving, re you know, having to eat his food in the, in the dorms of all the youth players and stuff. It's absolutely heinous. So I'm not surprised to see there's a lot of mess around his name. And I think... For me, the greatest issue with Eric Ten Hag has always been the style of play. I think I was one of those people that believed that he was going to come to United and play the Ajax way or a version of the Ajax way. But clearly that wasn't the mandate. Clearly the mandate was maybe to win trophies, maybe to finish in the top four, because he's not really tried to have us playing attractive football, really. Apart from that one half or that one game, sorry, against Crystal Palace, actually, um, in the League Cup, I think that was only one time we actually saw United actually play some sort of level of coherent, you know, entertaining football. Apart from that, it's been absolutely drab. So maybe that is was the case. But I just wish that things would have changed in that direction. I think many of fans would have given him more time if we had, you know, better football to watch. But the fact that the football is dire, the signings are terrible, the results aren't going our way, it just makes it a lot easier to just, you know, to just say, hey, sack him and get someone else in you that can play that side of the play. But again, I just think with these owners, there's just no way you can kind of win. You know, they have too much control. They meddle too much. Um, there's no, you know, plan for sporting success in the first place anyway. So it's a bit of a shit show, to be completely honest. It's honestly, honestly a bit of a shit show. But again, I cannot be surprised when it comes to United. I cannot be surprised when it comes to United.